What's going on guys? Today we're going over the five misconceptions about real estate photography and I got a really busy day as every single day is. So the very first shoot that we're going to go to today is a condo on the beach, but we got, it costs a ton to get started. You can't do it part time. You have to do the editing. You have to give away free shoots and you have to work weekends. Let's go ahead and get this video started and go over misconception number one. Misconception number one is that gear is too expensive or that it should be super expensive to get into real estate photography. And honestly, it's just not true. When I first started out, I had a open box camera from Best Buy. It was an A6000 for 500 bucks. I had a really cheap Phantom 3 standard that flew like 50 feet away and lost signal and I had probably a $50 tripod. And granted, that is not the world's best setup, but it really shouldn't be when you're first starting out. You gotta learn the basics, you gotta know what you're doing, you gotta shoot a few crappy houses before you get into the leagues of buying some better gear. Even to this day, this whole kit right here costs around $10,000. So, you know, the Sony a7 IV, it's like 2,500 bucks, and then a couple lenses, some good drones, etc we still don't go out and buy like a $6,000 or a $10,000 camera body. At the end of the day, this gear is basically a commodity that's just supposed to be making you money in the business. You shouldn't be constantly putting more and more and more money into like the best gear possible. You can get really, really good high-end images and videos out of gear that doesn't make you refinance your house. So when you are getting into this, don't spend everything that you have on the best gear possible. Get something that will get you started and get you the reps in that you need to feel confident in shooting some high-end homes and work your way up the scale of getting a little bit better equipment day by day. Misconception number two is that you can't do this part-time. And why that's such a big misconception is because that's what I did, that's what I had to do. I had to do it part-time in order to get to full-time. So when I was doing it part-time, I was doing early morning shoots, I was working a nine to five job. So I was doing it before then, and then I was doing it after work at like five o'clock. And obviously this is time dependent, I was doing twilight shoots, and then I would obviously be pushing people to do weekends. So if you can do some weekend shoots and you can do it in the afternoon, that's your best way to get started part-time. And then and of course the whole goal should be to go full-time but in the beginning that's really what it takes you have to do some part-time work it's okay that it's part-time for a little while that's how you get started and that's how you get to go full-time eventually misconception number three is that you have to do all of your own editing not only is this a misconception but you just you shouldn't do it I mean I started to do all the editing in the beginning and you know, there's like a little bit of a pride thing to it, which is okay. And I think you should know how to do it just in case of emergency. But to be honest, the people overseas that are gonna charge you less for it are not only gonna charge you less, but they're gonna be better than you. I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but they're just going to be better. This is what they do day in and day out. They're editing several houses a day, and this is their profession. And when you can send your photos out to somebody that it is their profession, this is their, they're like, Instead of a Swiss army knife, as Alex Ramosi would like to call it, they are a scalpel. They do one thing really, really well. And when you send it to somebody that does really, you know, they're that scalpel, you are then freed up to do more. You can scale your business, you can hire more employees, you can take on more shoots in a day. You just have so much more scalability when you hire that person out. So it's not just a misconception, it's a flat out, don't do it. Hire an editor, make sure that you find somebody that does a really good job, make sure that they communicate well, that they speak English really well, and that you can rely on them to deliver the photos back to you the next day. That is misconception number three. So the fourth misconception is about giving away free shoots. There's a lot of information online that tells you that in order to get new clients, you have to give away free shoots. And I totally understand the idea behind that. And it does make sense. But for me, I've never really given away free shoots. What I've done is instead given away maybe a free add-on. So like a drone, for example, if you're doing a paid shoot, say it's like $250 and then you want to add on free aerials to get a brand new client, that's a great idea. Uh, but I've honestly tried to stray away from giving away 
away free shoots in general because typically the kind of people that are going to be excited about a free shoot are the people that are going to want free shoots from now on. I know that's not always the case, but in a lot of scenarios, you're going to be going after the higher end clients and they're going to be the ones that are going to want to pay you because they're wanting that higher level of customer service, higher level of photo quality, um, you know, just an overall higher level experience. So in my opinion, that's a big misconception that you have to give away free shoots. I think that you should be doing your best to get paying customers right away. And if you want to give something away for free, just do an add on. All right, guys, we are back at the studio. I was intending on doing misconception number five at the last house, doing it inside, but the homeowner wouldn't leave. I'm sure you can uh, probably relate to that. So we decided to just come back to the studio, shoot the last one here. So that is what we're gonna do. So let's set this up real quick. We already got lights everywhere. I'm just gonna flick it on. All right, here we go. So end of the day, had a good day of shoots, misconception number five is that you have to work on weekends. And in the beginning, maybe you do have to work on weekends because you're part-time and you are trying to make the transition over to full-time. You're working a nine to five job and you're like, okay, how do I make this work? And you basically gotta work like 80 hours a week. And so your weekend is basically the only way to do that. And once you get it going though, most agents are trying to book things on the weekdays. And that's really helpful for, for you, where you can kind of control your schedule a little bit more and you don't have to work as many weekends as you might think. Now, I did just have to work a shoot last Saturday, two of them in fact, uh, but that's honestly kind of rare at this point. For the most part, we just work weekdays. So that's a big misconception that you have to work seven days a week, especially if you are setting the expectations in the very beginning. Uh, if you have online booking, you can put it to where you don't have availability on the weekends. You can have it set to where you can book 9 to 6 p.m. weekdays, and that kind of sets the tone just like that. And obviously, there's some occasions, you know, the one that I just mentioned on Saturday, the reason that we did that is because it was a vacation rental, and it was being turned over that day. So it was like the one opportunity that we had to shoot it. So there's, I, you know, scenarios where I totally understand, and I will make sure that we can get that done. But overall, you don't necessarily have to work weekends once you you're established. So those are the five misconceptions of real estate photography. And uh, let me know if you think I missed any, if there's any others that I should go over. And uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.